happy Sunday. So I um, remembered to bring my face shield with me today um, just for a little added UV protection. Of course, I've got my glasses and my sun protective gloves on here. And when I get out and walk across the parking lot, I'll put my hat on. But I just put on this, um, I hope I'm gonna say this right, Kamake uh, Mermaid Skin Gel UV. I love this one. This is a little luxury for me because it's a little on the pricier side. I get this on Yes Style. It is a gel sunscreen that is SPF 50, PA++++++. Plus, 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 plus. It has um, zinc and titanium dioxide as well as um, zinc and titanium dioxide, which will cover UVB and UVA, but it also has octinoxate for UVB, which is a chemical filter. And then it also has tinosorb in it, uh, which is a chemical filter that is not available in our sunscreens in the United States. Uh, but gives you a UVB and UVA protection. And then it also, I believe, has another chemical filter called Juvenal A+, which will cover uh, UVA1 and UVA2 together. So many good chemical filters in this. And it, it does not contain any alcohols. In, there are no alcohols in this. So those of you who find that gel sunscreens with alcohols in them are too drying or sting, that, that's great. You'll like it. It does not leave a greasy residua. It dries down pretty matte. It is really good with um, makeup, uh, both being, uh, you know, going over and not smearing too much, um, I would imagine. But uh, yeah, it, it doesn't pill. Um, what else can I tell you about it? It has some bizarre, unfortunately, little extracts in it. That's my one bugaboo with it. It's got like artichoke extract and cherry extract. But other than those, it is it is fun. I get this on Yes Style. Um, it's a favorite. It goes on a lot like the Hotelabo one, uh, but uh, doesn't have the doesn't have the alcohols in it. Um, and here I'll just take the face mask. Again. Oh, and note about the face mask. You guys were asking, doesn't this rub off my sunscreen? The nice thing about this mask is it actually sits off of the face. So only only a little bit does it actually physically touch my face here around around the glasses. And so, you know, when I when I go in, I te I tend to reapply. But just so you guys can see how it looks on here. And I wear the face mask just to show people that there's an alter, you know, there are other there are other options out there because while while this sunscreen gets pretty good into the wavelengths of UVA1 that, um, that most sunscreens have a, a challenge uh, covering, it's not totally comprehensive. Uh, you know, it's difficult to get all wavelengths. So for people out there with lupus, polymorphous light eruption, dermatomyositis, um, you know, people on medications that um, make them sensitive to the sun, uh, certain antihypertensive medications, um, you know, sunscreen is not going to cut it for you and you need additional, additional measures to really protect your skin, not only from, you know, the cosmetic angle of anti-aging, but for skin cancer. Certain antihypertensive medications, they lower your, they make you more sensitive to, to, to sun and kind of at a low indolent level, but enough so that those medications have been shown to put people at increased risk for developing skin cancers. And uh, regardless, sun protection has to be multimodal. It cannot rely exclusively on, on sunscreen. It needs to take into account avoiding excessive UV exposure and wearing sun protective clothing and uh, reapplying the sunscreen. Happy Sunday. Hi everybody, happy Sunday to you. You're rocking your Louise friends? Yes. Yeah, mine should be in the mail to, um, today or tomorrow, well I guess tomorrow because it's Sunday. I There's am no happy with Warby Parker, that's for sure. <laughs> so I'm over here in Whole Foods and I just want to point out they have the Everyman Jack Charcoal Face Wash um, Acne Skin Cleanser. Ignore the charcoal, that's kind of whatever. I wish they'd stop putting charcoal and stuff. But I love this particular product. It is fragrance free on a 2% salicylic acid face wash. So um, this is one that I recommended uh, in the uh, close coming down video. It's really good uh, as a fragrance free as a fragrance free BHA face wash. Uh, this is also great for the men out there 
to lather in the beard area, let sit on your skin for a few minutes and then rinse it off before you shave. It will help with uh, ingrown hairs. And likewise, the Blackhead Eliminator. This one is a scrub, so this one's got some mechanical exfoliant in it, I believe. Um, so it's a little more aggressive. I would just go with the face wash. And then I also am eyeing and liking these Bulldog Sensitive Sensitive line. Just gonna care for men, whatever. Men and women can use these, but um, this is uh, it has um, oat, oat extract in it, which is good for soothing the face. So this this is a great aftershave. You guys were asking me about aftershave. Just use a plain fragrance-free moisturizer. And this would be a good one. Um, Bulldog also has a sensitive face wash that is likewise fragrance-free. These are good. I like these. Hey guys, we're here at Whole Foods. I'm leaning over so that you can see, so that you can see that um, Can Make Mermaid sunscreen. It's not too bad as far as the shine. Um, I have it over a layer of um, well, it's MD UV Sport, which is a little, a little shiny at baseline. I had a very uh, friendly barista this morning. I was interrogating her about the contents of the turmeric latte they have here. Because um, I was curious, the latte has coconut milk in it, but I wondered if they use a latte mix, and I was asking if that had dairy in it. And she showed me the mix. It has no dairy or no sugar, so I might try that sometime. I might try it, yeah. Except they put espresso in the turmeric latte, so I don't know how good that would go. Coffee and turmeric latte. Kind of it's a lot going on. Yeah. I do want to try that turmeric chai. Yeah. Yeah, she said it tasted like chai because I was like, can you get it without the agave syrup? And she's like, yeah, but I wouldn't recommend it because that um, makes it taste like a nice chai and you want a little sweet in there. So. Oh, agave does? Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you asked her because I've been wanting to try that. Yeah, she was very informative. How's your coffee? Coffee is good. Yeah. Yeah, we're back at the regular Whole Foods where we used to come. I've been loving their breakfast bar lately. It's been, they've had, today they had four different types of rice cauliflower. That's why I yeah. can resist. I know. They got the curry, which is on top, and then yeah. there's a tomato rice cauliflower. Yeah. On the next layer. Uh -huh. Some beets. And um, they also had this veggie ceviche. Which yeah. I've gotten it before and it's really good. It's got um, mostly carrots, jalapeno, and onions and cauliflower. Uh -huh. But it's in a brine. A yeah. yeah. So it's really good. Yeah, that is good. And my usual uh, you falafel. Awful. I'm you happy to have those, those again. Yeah, they were like very nice. Tell everybody about what this beautiful thing is. Yeah, I got one of these watermelon radishes again this week that I got last week. And then underneath that I have some butternut squash and then fennel. They have, uh, this is like a cauliflower tabbouleh, just cauliflower, tomatoes, parsley, onions. There's also a turmeric uh, cauliflower rice and a tomato cauliflower rice and some zoodles and a few pieces of granola and some sesame seeds I have sprinkled on there as well. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I got the tabbouleh also. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. Mmm, look at that cauliflower. So beautiful. I think I'm obsessed with cauliflower. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> I eat it every day. Dollar spot. Target dollar spot. It's yeah. cute. Just admiring my mom's festive valentine wreath here on the door. Little boy. Hey, little boy. We missed you. Hey, missed you. Hi, no, they, no more cartoons on PBS, kids? Oh, yeah. Joy time. Aww. <laughs> You're about due for a haircut again, little boy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's going to go this week, I think. These He's bangs, go these bangs have got to go, he says. They've got to go. <laughs> I gotta get my I hope we I, can put I, him in the hands of the same groomer he had. Can last I get a time. can I get a fade? She did such a good job. Isn't that what that men's haircut is called? A fade? A 
Oh yeah, a fade. That's, <laughs> That's what he needs. You need to have a fade. Aww. Well, hey guys, what's up? I just put that fluorescent bulb on, but I'm going to make myself a little Borsigi adaptogen latte here. I think I am going to just heat up some almond milk and mix it in with this instant coffee packet. So good you guys have got to try that it's like a quarter of a cup almond milk nuked in the microwave for a minute whisked in with a little of this so good and boiling hot water i am just gonna put on a little sunscreen this is ignore that <laughs> that is not an acral melanoma <laughs> uh not a laughing matter acral melanoma is quite deadly um but this is this is CeraVe's ultralight moisturizing lotion have you guys tried this um honestly it's okay it is it's a chemical sunscreen only your uva filter in this is avabenzone and then you have homosalate octisalate and octoquilin as your uvb as your UVB filters. So together, it's a broad spectrum sunscreen, but avabenzone degrades upon exposure to UV light. And so the coverage, the protection, the SPF 30 protection, as well as the protection against the, the deeper rays that penetrate and have nothing to do with SPF, those are the UVA rays. Remember, SPF is only UVB. UVA rays, that's what avabenzone is covering, you're losing coverage with with this with this sunscreen uh, with time. So these you um, you you absolutely 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 have to reapply. So that being said, I find this kind of on the expensive side. But let's just put it on here. You know the uh, Cerave AM sunscreen I love. It is a combination sunscreen. So you've got zinc in there for UVB and UVA. Um, so, you know, it's a little more, it's a, it's a little more insurance, but this, the vehicle on this is really nice to put on. I'm just swatching some on over my cheeks here so you guys can see. Feel, it feels really good going on. Like you actually enjoy putting this on. I know many of you find that CeraVe's products sting and you know, to sting or not to sting, there's no ingredient that predicts that. I mean, there are ingredients that will sting, but there, there's no ingredient in something like this that's gonna be, you know, that I'm gonna be able to say, oh yeah, it's that, oh yeah, it's this. Some people, you know, have a tendency to sting. <laughs> they're stingers. I mean, there, there are so many, there, it, people who are self-report sensitive skin, it's over 50% of, of, of people in, in consumer surveys. And those people can be subclassified into stingers, into burners, you know, people who it burns, um, people who, who flush. So it's all, all subcategories. So it's hard to say for sure. It's, it doesn't seem to be any particular ingredient, probably just, just a hypersensitivity to things coming in contact with your face. Um, okay, but look how nice it goes on. I mean, like a dream. This is great. Expensive as stink though, for this little bottle, like, you'll burn through it, but it feels really nice. Great for, great for oily prone skin and great for acne prone skin. This, this is not gonna leave a cast. If it is chemical only, there's not gonna be any cast associated with it. So it's, it's a good one. I like it, it's fun to use, it's nice to use, but the coverage that you get from this, the SPF and the UVA protection that you get from this, it doesn't compare to that can make mermaid, can make mermaid that I just put on. That is, that is more, that is more insurance for your UVB and UVA protection than this. 
I think that one has ceramides in it. I'm not entirely sure, but this has ceramides. Um, so it's all just differences in the vehicle, but the main difference between this and the Kamake, I hope I'm saying that right, is that this does not have the zinc and the titanium dioxide. It doesn't have those wonderful UVA filters, Tinosaur, Buvenol. It just has our lousy Ava Benzone, but it doesn't leave a cast. So, in other words, I don't, I don't know. This is worth it, but I, I guarantee a lot of you will like this, like this product a lot. So, yeah, it does have a nice matte, matte finish, as it says. I don't know that the CeraVe AM necessarily does not have a matte finish, but that one stings a lot of people. And it leaves. On my skin, no cast, but on darker skin types, sometimes can leave a little bit of a cast because of the zinc, but honestly, it, it does blend in pretty well as far as that kind of sheer cast. Oh my God, this is so good. I'm like kicking myself for never trying it this way before. I'm not a latte person whatsoever. Like I hate milk in my coffee, but this, particular adaptogen coffee of Four Sigmatics, the Tulsi Astragalus Light and Cinnamon. If ever there was something to make a latte out of, oh, this one, so good. Well, hey guys, what's up? I'm just here with my little bed bug friend, Breo. I, um, no matter how, how I try, how good I try to, no matter how hard I try to be good when I'm on the computer and have good ergonomics, I invariably cramp up my wrist. It's a common area, you know, where you rest your you you rest your wrist on the uh, keyboard pad and compress the little it's the median nerve canal there. You have a little nerve that goes goes in get, goes into the wrist here for innervation, and that can get compressed from just this kind of thing and, and pressure and result ultimately, unfortunately, in carpal tunnel syndrome. It can really inflame that, that nerve that runs, runs through there. So I try and be good when I'm on the computer for a long time and you know make sure that I have my wrist placed appropriately and all that, but I'm worse at that. And so I've got a little cramping in my wrist and this little bed bug is really, really nice on, on the wrist. So I'm enjoying that. But anyways, guys, um, Pyongyang Yul update or, you know, just kind of afterthought, I suppose. Uh, many of you uh, have started using a lot of the products that I reviewed from my uh, Pyongyang Yule review. And one product that, you know, I've been wrapping my head around for quite some time, just trying to figure out like why I enjoy using it. Um, but, you know, as I said in that video, I can't really strongly, confidently recommend any of those products because, you know, many of the ingredients are just outside of the realm of what I'm familiar with, what there's literature to support utility for, but you know, I have enjoyed those products. So one of them, um, and many of you have started using it and love it, it's the peeling gel. Uh, you know, I was like, what is it about this that makes it so so ple so pleasant to use? It's nothing more than, you know, my head was like, nothing more than propylene glycol. Propylene glycol is a penetration enhancer. It helps to it helps ingredients absorb better. It is frequently added as an inactive ingredient in many products, but also in many prescription topical topical drugs. It helps it helps the active ingredient penetrate better, and at, you know, kind of low concentrations. It's also a humectant, so it has benefit. It has a role in in skincare. It's in a lot of prescription drugs, but it's a double-edged sword in that while it's helpful, it's also it also increases the irritancy of the product. So it's a real bugaboo in a lot of prescription topical medications. The propylene gly glycol people are irritated by it, and they'll just they can't tolerate it. It stings. Um, so you know, in my head, it's like this isn't really peeling anything. You know, propylene glycol is not a keratolytic. And so today I just picked it up, you know, because the, the ingredients are in Korean, not which I don't read, but there's a little, there's a little label on, you know, a sticky label on here that has the ingredients in English. I'm like looking at the ingredients, water, propylene glycol. Last ingredient is hydroxyethyl urea, which I talked about earlier this week. Urea, hydroxyethyl urea and urea aren't the same thing. 
Urea is a fantastic ingredient in moisturizers. It is a humectant and, uh, you know, has been, it really can, can hydrate the, the stratum corneum. And as I said in, in that video, it can intercalate down into, into the lipid bilayer of the top layer of the skin and help the lipid bilayer, you know, kind of stay oriented properly and not, not be disrupted and result in transepidermal water loss. So in my, you know, once it dawned on me just now that, oh wait, this has has, this has urea in it. No wonder I'm kind of liking it. I think it's, you know, the urea is really helpful. So, you know, I, I guess I get the idea that this kind of prepares the skin. Everybody talks about how it peels the skin. I, you know, I don't think the urea in this is at keratolytic, really keratolytic concentrations. But what I like about it and what I, why I think I like it, okay, I'll just say that it, because it's hard for me to, to confidently recommend this to anyone. Um, cause I know somebody's going to have issue with it. I know, I know people are going to be irritated by the propylene glycol and this and have issue with it. But the reason why I think I like it is I feel as though it prepares my skin for, for moisturizers better. Um, it prepares my skin, you know, it kind of conditions it before, before cleansing. So for example, tonight I put the, the mineral oil to break up my mascara base. And then I rubbed this all over my lower half, sparing around my eyes. And I just felt like it was this nice hydration, you know, kind of hydrating slurry over my face. And then when I wash my, my face, uh, in the shower with the, um, your good skin, green tea cleanser, it really, I don't know, it's, it really seemed to effectively, I don't know, prevent irritation. Not that that cleanser is particularly irritating, but that's kind of what, at least in my brain, thinking mechanistically as to how this might actually, why, why the heck I like this. I want a, I want a, a mechanism for why I like this. And I think I've come up with it. I think I've rationalized it enough in my brain that I probably will, will continue to use this from time to time. Not on a consistent basis. And again, like I said, so hard for me to feel comfortable recommending any of these products to you, uh, knowing, knowing that, but I have really enjoyed, I have really enjoyed many of them. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, really, I've really been happy with them. And I know you guys want to know, like, am I still using all of the things I've used up a majority of what I reviewed for you guys and have not continued to reuse everything, but I do still use the moisture rich ampule. I love that. It's, it's just a root extract, which I think is just a powerful humectant. And that has been, that has been fantastic. And I also use from time to time the acne cream it's called. Um, I don't know why there's nothing particularly, there's nothing about it that makes it distinctly for acne it has niacinamide in it and licorice root extract. So I definitely see a brightening effect with that. Um, I use it um, as I was using the, as I normally use the, the um, deep dive water cream. I know this is probably getting confusing. You're like, whoa, 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 all these changes. The Pyeong Kung Yul stuff, I don't really do that consistently. So in other words, I don't have a substantially different skincare routine on a regular basis. My skincare routine is pretty much identical to what I posted however many weeks ago. That is what I do on a regular basis. But from time to time, I am still using some of those other products and I'm like, dang, I really still, you know, I really like it. I hesitate to be too confident about them because I just, you know, I can't, I don't know. I, I, yeah, there, there are too many unknowns. And so it makes it hard for me. And I don't recommend doing the whole seven step thing that I came up with whatsoever. I mean, that the whole reason why I did it that way is to be able to review as many of the products as possible and kind of show you like how I think they're intended to be used. Not to tell you, oh God, please do a seven step skincare routine. Cause you know, that's not my thing. Like I don't think that's excessive and definitely will probably set you up for irritancy down the road at some point. It's excessive and not necessary. Uh, but uh, you know, I came up with a routine just kind of as a, as a way to figure out how to use the products and see what they, they work, you know, what they were helpful for. And, uh, but definitely I don't think, I don't think I would never recommend that you guys buy all seven, you know, all of those products because you know, that's just ridiculous. And you know, that many ingredients is like, it's like building, it's like building a, I don't know, an all you can eat buffet of potential problems. So um, keep it simple, keep it simple. Fewer things, always better. But that being said, I, I can't help it. I really like that line a lot, a lot, a lot. 
um, yeah, it is a K-beauty win for me. I have really been enjoying it. Comment below, those of you guys who who got on the bandwagon of Kyung Kyung Yule. I haven't heard anything, I haven't heard anybody say anything negative about, about their experience after they purchased them. So let me know, you know, what, what if any have you tried and what have you liked, but um, I just like it. I can't recommend it. We'll say that. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's just a little update on that because I know you guys were wondering if I'm still using those products and I do enjoy them from time to time. <laughs> but anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the vlogs this weekend. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.